Slate is here with the Senior Pickleball Report, powered by TNC Network. Hey, let's get it going. Okay, we are joined today in our People of Pickleball episode by two women, Jenna Hessert and Carol Rolls. Jenna is the co-founder of the newly formed Oklahoma City Premier Pickleball League. She's a CrossFit athlete, and she plays on the APP Tour. And she's joined by good friend Carol Rolls, who is a friend of the show as well. She is the owner of the Oklahoma City Punishers of the newly formed National Pickleball League, which had its inaugural season last season. Okay, before we get to that, though, the important things. Discounts, all in the description. Newsletter below, check that out as well. You want to subscribe and, you know, keep up on all your things in the pickleball world. Also, check out our merch page, get your SPR stuff and wear it proud. Okay, folks, let's get to that conversation with Jenna and Carol. Okay, uh, welcome to the Senior Pickleball Report, Jenna Hessert and Carol Rolls. Hi, thanks for having us. Yeah. It's great to have you. Um, As you heard in the intro, obviously, Carol, I've had on before. Um, with the National Pickleball League, the owner of the OKC Punishers. And Jenna has started a league in Oklahoma City, which seems to be sort of the rage that's going on throughout the country, which I think is pretty cool. I know I watch um, Tuesday Night Pickleball from the Orchard in Arizona. I lived in Phoenix for a while, so it's kind of cool to see that. But let's talk um, about that in a minute in the league. Before we get to that, let's talk about how you got into this crazy game, because obviously it's taken everybody by storm. And, you know, you've even gone a little further by um, taking in creating a league. <laughs> so let's talk about how you got into pickleball. Give me a little bit of background, um, you know, about yourself athletically, and then kind of what made you gravitate towards uh, this game? Yeah, so I, uh, I grew up in a tennis family. So I am a tennis to pickleball convert. My mother played D1 at the Air Force Academy. So okay. got the tennis genes from her. Um, played, so played junior tennis, uh, actually ended up running track in college at Yale. So did Ooh, a, a little what event? Uh, the 400 and 800. Yeah. I was an 800 so, guy in college. Cool. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I yeah. uh, love running that. It was a little bit of a love hate relationship with the 400. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but enjoyed that. And then, uh, wanted to go back to tennis after college, but, um, actually had a shoulder surgery. And so was it, you know, wasn't quite the same with serving. And, uh, and then like most people kind of during COVID, I got introduced to pickleball yeah. and, um, yeah, I picked it up then started playing amateur and did well and then tried out uh, my first pro tournament spring of 22 was my first one. Wow. Yeah. So that was a pretty quick transition. Oh, let me just, uh, start during COVID. Oh, let me try some pro. Yeah. Um, I'm already there in my mind. It's just not there physically. Um, so I, I, great, obviously big background. Um, I've read a little bit about you. Uh, obviously you're fit into CrossFit. I've watched some of your matches. Um, you don't mess around. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about, um, first of all, your relationship with, with Carol, cause Carol obviously, um, jumped all in too, in the pickleball world by, um, you know, becoming an owner of a league that really was a groundbreaking league, the National Pickleball League for 50 plus, um, you know, a league that had uh, a combine and tryouts and six teams and played at chicken and pickle and had an unbelievable first inaugural season. And you see something like that, obviously, and we'll get to the league that you, you've started. Um, but um, what's the relationship you have with Carol? And uh, is it a mentorship? Is it a friendship? Is it both? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, you mentioned you know the Arizona Pickleball League, and that's kind of what we wanted to model the, the OPPL after. Um, and yeah. so started up in, in December, working. Uh, Chris Hayworth helped out, and we created. I uh, really just started with you know reaching out to people, creating the teams, and creating an Instagram account of all things. Okay. And I got a message from Carol saying, "Hey, this is really cool. Can you tell me more about it?" And we started messaging on Instagram, and she goes, "Well, who am I talking to?" I was like, "Oh, this is Jen." <laughs> and uh, we actually, you know, had that connection. So it started with just uh, Carol, you know, messaging the, the DMs of the of the OPPL, and yeah. um, you know, our friendship started there. And then I officially asked her to help mentor me in the league because of, as you said, all of her experience in doing amazing things with the NPL. Absolutely. So 
Carol, what were your thoughts when you saw, obviously, a, a league popping up in your, your hometown, um, which is pretty cool? Well, I was super excited about it. Again, I reached out to Jenna. Uh, I was like, okay, she's on top of things, and she's a, a trailblazer. She That reminded me a little bit of me just in that I was willing to grab the bull by the horns. And yeah. even though I didn't know a lot about it, I was excited about pickleball. I certainly was excited about our three founders. Um, you know, Michael Chen, who you just interviewed, yes. Beth Bellamy and Rick Witzkin, and anything they come up with has already got a lot of credibility behind it. And so I yeah. started seeing what Jenna was putting out there and I was like, she's, she's got it going on, you know? Yeah. And I was like, I really want to collaborate with her um, because I just know that it'll help grow the sport. It'll help bring more eyes onto uh, uh, bring, ma making Oklahoma kind of a hub for pickleball. We're in the center yeah. of the country. We're about to build this huge new facility here. Um, and we really, we want to attract, you know, top pickleball players to this area. And yeah. um, certainly collaborating and cross-promoting is a great way to help facilitate that. So Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously having a professional premier league in your hometown and highlighting hometown talent mm -hmm. Um, can only obviously um, sort of broaden your, your um, I guess, your impact on Oklahoma and pickleball as, as a whole. So, Jenna, let's talk about the league. Um, how many teams, what's the schedule looking like? Uh, what do you have in mind for 2024? Yeah, so our league has four teams. There's 16 total players, so four uh, people per team. It's three guys and one girl. We specifically did that to keep the level high, right? We want to yeah. eventually get to two guys, two girls, but we want to, you know, introduce more, more women to pickleball, um, but grow that talent. So it's two mixed matches, two men's doubles matches. And then if they, the team split, they play what we call an Oklahoma showdown. Uh, Ooh, so I like it. Uh, a tiebreaker, <laughs> rally scoring to 21 and rotate out every four points. Um, but we okay. had to, of course, put our own spin on it. And yeah. then uh, it's, a, yeah, it'll be a, a Eight week season. So every team plays every team six weeks. And then we'll have a semis where your one and four seed and your two mm. and three seed will play. And then the finals the following week. And it's uh, right currently hosted out of Prairie Ales, a brewery in Oklahoma that has uh, a pickleball court inside the brewery. Ooh. So people buy a ticket, they get a free beer with their ticket, and then they can have a few more brewskis while they watch and have a good time. Right on, right on. So give me, do uh, you have some team names you can throw by me? Yes. Yeah, so our four teams, we have the Wolves, which I'm a proud member of. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Proud. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You got it. And then we have the Sharks, the Barracudas, and the Jaguars. Oh, fun, fun. Absolutely. So obviously you play, you know, uh, some APP stuff. Talk about what uh, some of the backgrounds on um, some of the other players, because obviously you can have a league in your city. And if it's a big enough city and it's a hub like OKC is um, kind of like Phoenix is and in Salt Lake and some other places, obviously in Florida and Austin and Texas. Um, finding good players is one thing. So is, give me some of the backgrounds of some of the players you have in your league. Yeah. So we actually have of the, uh, 16 players, uh, six of us currently play pro tournaments. Uh, so we were yeah. all actually at the APP Puta Gorda and we're all cheering for each other. And everyone yeah. said, Hey, we're all based. We're all <laughs> Oklahoma, actually. Yeah. Uh, so Chris Hayworth, uh, you guys may know him from uh, recently beating Ben Johns at National That's right. Singles. So, uh, you know, he's, yeah, top, top five, I think three right now on the APP yeah. tour singles. And then he and I play mixed doubles in a lot of tournaments together. Uh, he's yeah. my main training. So Chris Hayworth, we have Chase Holderman, uh, that's been several um, MLP players. Uh, Kale Hammond, based out of Tulsa. He's a former um, college tennis player as well. Uh, had some big, big wins in singles. And then we also have James Seagraves and Alex Moody, who just have played their uh, first pro tournament this year. So really this league, you know, not only promoting the current pro players, but hopefully it's a stepping stone to get more players from Oklahoma City into the pro scene. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that can only uh, obviously increase your talent pool. Um, obviously, you have, I think, um, the best model um, in professional pickleball, and that is the National Pickleball League. Anybody that's been involved with this league, and I've just been a person from mainly from the outside interviewing folks, ownership and players, and attending a couple events, 
But as somebody who has been looking from the outside into um, all types of pro pickleball, I was just, um, I just narrated a documentary on the professional game. And it's like the young and the restless compared to what MPL is doing, which is, you know, <laughs> age like wine and chill out. <laughs> um, it, I, I think, and this is, this is unsolicited advice, but I would take full advantage of what Carol and company are doing in that league because it is a pleasant place to um, be and attend and to see, if you want to see people treated like true professionals, um, NPL is, is really got it going on. And uh, so I think you're very fortunate to have somebody like Carol and um, a league that you know, is only really a, is a year ahead of you and you can see what they've done and they can tell you the growing pains they've had because everything's not perfect and you got to figure things out because obviously taking on something of this magnitude is no joke. Um, because you know, you have obviously goals and things like that and probably, you know, getting on, you know, television more and, and, and all those things. So talk about what you want to see happen. I know it's year one, you know, it's, we're in February, but like, what do you kind of, where, where do you want to see this league go maybe in the next year or two? And I, you know, I get it. It's baby steps. So. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, first you said I have probably the best <laughs> mentor and model uh, here to use, you know, to base the. the yeah, absolutely. Um, but right now, so we have a uh, YouTube live stream already set up. Uh, we had over 500 views <laughs> on our opening night. So that was really wow, successful. Congrats. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So hoping to grow that, um, which one will help with sponsorships, right? So some of these players, as I mentioned, maybe they're looking to step into the pro scene. Now they can reach out to sponsors and say, hey, I'm going to be live streamed you know, every other Monday night during the season. Yeah. Uh, and that'll help them. So ultimately, if this league could actually, again, like a pro sports team, play, pay the players that are in the league right. and right. then sponsor them to work for some pro tournaments. I mean, it's expensive. Um, and so the goal with this is if this could fund, let's say two or three pro tournaments a year for these players. Yeah. Um, and then eventually, you know, we'll have two seasons. We're going to have kind of a spring season for this one. And then we'll have a, a late summer, early fall for season two. And yeah. then ultimately the goal is to, like I said, grow it, uh, potentially up to six teams, two guys, two girls, and then you know, make it a Monday night event. I mean, as big or bigger yeah. than the orchard. And I know, right. you know, Carol mentioned, you know, we have a facility that's coming to Oklahoma City, you know, potentially move it there, um, you know, have it be, that's what you do on Monday nights in OKC. You go yeah. see the OPPL play, and then in between our seasons, you're going to go on the weekends and go cheer on the punishments. I mean, that's, that's going to be the Oklahoma, you know, pickleball scene. Sleeve Sue with the Senior Pickleball Report, reminding you to check out our podcast, People of Pickleball. That's where I speak with all the people in pickleball, the industry, players, team owners, apparel creators, uh, people that run organizations, people that create apps, you name it. We're talking to them on People of Pickleball. It's in the playlist of our YouTube channel. It's our podcast. Check it out. Lots of good information there and um, lots of really cool folks doing amazing things. You can also catch our podcast on Spotify and Amazon. Check out the link in the description. So, Carol, I mean, obviously, you just got through your first season um, on the verge of season two. What are some of the things that you learned maybe unexpectedly season one as being an owner and somebody who's highly involved <laughs> in the league that, you know, you could, you know, obviously see potentially as, as roadblocks and things that you could give advice to, because obviously there's plenty of things you don't know going into this. You know, everybody's got ideas of how they want it to work. And then there's a the reality of how it does work. So I guess what, what is something you learned over the last year as an owner and uh, that you uh, are taking with you into season two? Be flexible, uh, yeah. knowing always that year one is going to have some changes that where things are going to evolve over time. You try yeah. certain things, you're willing to be a trailblazer, but you're also willing to get rid of things that don't really fit how you wanted it to roll. And so yeah. that would be one thing. But uh, another thing that I would say for anybody that's thinking about starting up something like this or, or whatever is to really think about um, your team culture, your organization's yeah. culture. Um, it's so important because unity, I mean, if you don't have unity, that'll break you down quicker than anything. So you want the right. right. I, I would probably choose more of a team player person over necessarily a superstar sometimes, just yeah. if I know 
that one might be a little hard to deal with and the other one is just always giving, always encouraging, you know, yeah. all those things um, because we want to feed off of one another in such a positive way where, you know, that's going to help us um, get through the hard times, enjoy the good times. It's not, it's like a family. You have to think about who do I want in my family? So yeah, I think that's a great point. And you mentioned culture. Um, I talk about that a lot with um, the senior pro uh, scene, so to speak. And I think before NPL started, what was beneficial for them is the senior pro circuit was pretty tight. Um, they would hang out together. Um, and, and part of this is too, the competition level is is good. It's very deep and it's, you know, and they want to win. But the difference is um, in the senior champion world, they're not trying to make a living. Um, and, you know, obviously Jenna's in a world where folks are, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to make a living and they're at a different point in their lives and, and trying to do different things. So as you look at this, I think what you've done, uh, Carol, with NPL and all of you um, is you've, you've brought in, like you mentioned, you brought in people that are quality people. And yes, they're very good pickleball players too. Um, and I think that's something obviously any league could use. And I, I see that at the orchard a, a little bit. Um, there's some quality people who have been involved in pickleball. They have good reputations. And so Jenna, my question to you is like, um, looking forward, um, do you see this league having things like obviously a commissioner, a, a CEO, um, uh, a mascot that's not Carol? Um, <laughs> Yeah, oh, absolutely. So my ultimate goal is um, to, you know, have team owners. Uh, so right now, you know, we have team captains. We're doing a draft that way. But if we could actually get team owners, have a CEO, have a commissioner, um, yeah. grow it. And the way we have it set up actually right now, uh, there's a reason I called it Oklahoma Premier Pickleball League because then we could actually have a challenger pickleball league too. So right. there's room to grow for, for your next level of players looking to, to break in and, and get into there. and then. As you know, as mentioned, um, the first thing we started with when, when developing this league, and the first thing I developed with uh, Chris Hayworth and Chase Holderman talking to them is we wrote a mission statement. And that mission statement was how do we grow pickleball in, in Oklahoma? How do we support our pro players and create that you know hub of pickleball within Oklahoma? So yeah. you know we had those kind of key values uh, to always turn back to, uh, regardless whenever we're making any decisions. Right. Right. Um, is there a, a website and stuff where folks can find out, obviously, the schedule and, and, and all those uh, details? Yes. Yeah, so our Instagram account is OPP League. And then we also have a Facebook page, Oklahoma Premier Pickleball League. Uh, and both of those have our YouTube live stream link there. Uh, we have our apparel store that Carol set us up with, Santa Barbara Happy Pickle. So you Smart. Can, uh, hey, yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. So you can wrap up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you can uh, buy your own school. She's awesome. Lauren is incredible. I love so, Lauren. Yeah, that's so huge. So uh, yeah. very cool. Um, you, you, up and running and, and pretty quick, obviously. Um, congratulations on that. So let's talk a little bit before we get you out of here about, and all, obviously all the things that Jenna just mentioned are in the description. So if you want to find a little bit more about the league, you can go below. Um, but let's talk about partnerships. And obviously you've, you've, you're collaborating with OKC Punishers, um, which does in, in some way connect you to some of the, the things going on in NPL. So um, for folks maybe listening that are interested in maybe, um, you know, partnering up or sponsoring um, your league, um, what's a good way to, what are you looking for? What's a good way to get a hold of you and, and how should they uh, pursue that? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, either, you know, reaching out to myself, General Husser, um, or the uh, Instagram or Facebook would be great. Just send a message. We're very responsive there. And then, you know, in the future for collaborations, our seasons, our first season is pretty short. As Carol said, you know, we're going to tweak some things for season two, maybe, maybe make it a right. little longer. Um, but we're not going to start till August. So we actually have a lot of time as you know, Carol yeah. gets her team going, um, do some cross-promotional events, you know, maybe have the OKC Punishers take on the OPPL, uh, you know, have some, have some bragging rights throughout, throughout the city. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to have several events coming, coming your way. So. Very, yeah, one other thing cool. I wanted to mention yeah. about the collaboration. <clears throat> so, um, as you know, we've got a couple combines coming up. So, right. um, um, Mark Milner, our fabulous GM, is going to take one in uh, Florida. 
I'm taking the one in Dallas and Jenna's coming with me to help me scout out the top players Woo! at the combine. So she's going to be kind of my uh, sidekick there. That's going to, you know, have a great eye and know exactly what to look for. Hopefully get into some conversations with the players. And because again, it is more than just your skill. Um, on yeah. OKC, we have a very strong culture. I think we're known for that. Yes, um, you are. And we have, we want people that are, you know, not only team players, because that's an obvious thing, but just good people, right? Good, yeah. fun yeah. people. Yeah, I, I think that's great for mentorships, too. I see a little bit of this happening mm-hmm. on the other pro tours where you have some champion senior pros helping people, uh, whether it's a little bit of coaching on the sidelines or just in general, they're helping out like, you know, in the, in the youth programs and things like that, because obviously there's a lot to offer. And I think, Again, I think this is an excellent collaboration because, um, you know, old folks like us have been through some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and not it all of it can be told it here, but... Exactly. Know, yeah. Take, some up, of this. take up our work. <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately, I mean, you, some of this stuff, you don't have to... My whole point is you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, you have a great foundation, um, especially because Carol's got, you know, she has, she'll put together a great team of solid people who I think could could work as well as uh, mentorships and, you know, picking out talent for your squads as well. So, um, yeah, I definitely encourage you to to keep pursuing what you've done. Obviously, you figured it out pretty quick. So anything else, Jenna, you want to mention about personal sponsorships or for the league partnerships or anything else before we get you out of here? Yeah, um, I mean, again, this league, we're trying to help grow, you know, both the, the sport within Oklahoma, but also the players. So. You know, I've talked to the players and I've, I've helped, you know, work with them and get individual sponsorships. So I'd say if someone, you know, really grabs your eye on the league and they're really fiery, you're like, man, I think that person has a lot of potential. Um, you know, feel free to reach out to those players individually as well. Like I said, we're here to, to grow them, support them. Um, and, you know, success isn't limited, right? It's, it's unlimited. Everyone, right. you know, yeah. rising tide, you know, rises all boats. So, I mean, that's, that's right. really what, uh, what we're looking for here. Um, all success yeah. is good yeah. And I think that's the overall riding um, umbrella within in, in most of pickleball is I from what I've dealt with, just with, you know, NPL or vendors or things like that. Everybody seems to be OK with kind of helping each other out. And we're all sort of figuring this out together at the beginning here. It's, it's way early um, in this professional sports growth. So excited to see what the league has to bring. And obviously, congratulations on taking it on and getting it going. And uh, I mean. It's, it should be exciting because obviously you have a great sort of, um, I guess, starting point to look at not only MPL, but somebody's done it um, in Arizona and you can only uh, improve upon that because they're doing a, a good job. So it'd be, it'd be fun to see what you can add to it. Absolutely. Yeah, we're excited about uh, what's to come in the future for Pickleball in Oklahoma. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Carol. And, oh, go ahead. Oh, one more thing. I, I've got to mention this. We've got a couple big press releases coming up. Obviously, we've got uh, That's right. the draft coming up. Um, we've got <laughs> some new teams coming on board. So I want people to stay tuned. Go to nplpickleball.com um, where you can find the out description. more about yep. that. Absolutely. And then, of course, you can go to Instagram at OKC Punishers or Facebook OKC Punishers and follow us there as well. So um, we're looking forward to the new season starting. Worked a couple minor bugs out. We really had a great inaugural year. But yeah. look out for 2024 because it's going to get hot. Absolutely. I look forward to actually <laughs> hoping to, to interview some of the new ownership, some of the new players in the league. And I wouldn't mind interviewing some folks from your league as well, Jenna. Um, any Absolutely. Anything we can do to promote pickleball anywhere um and folks doing really cool things out there uh, we're all for that so thank you both again for your time great seeing you carol all the links in the description that you need contact jen if you want to get involved in a partnership or sponsorship in the league and um looking forward to watching it in august thank you mike you're the best Hope you enjoyed our time with Carol and Jenna. Check out all the links below in the description for everything about those two. Follow their leagues and the progress because pickleball is exploding and it seems like leagues are popping up all over. Plenty of entertainment out there. And at the end of the day, folks, hey, let's pickle.